All right. Speaking of good luck, let's now talk about some of Joe Biden's problems. Yeah. Um, they cover both sides issues here. So a uh, new remarkable report coming out of the donor class <laughs> that they also are a little worried about uh, Joseph Robinette Biden here. Let's put this up on the screen. This is from Axios. Headline here is Biden's cheat sheets at fundraisers worry donors. President Biden has apparently been using note cards in closed door fundraisers, calling on pre-screened donors, then consulting his notes to provide detailed answers, according to people familiar with the routine. Most of Biden's conversations with donors are shielded from public view. The president begins his remar remarks with reporters, but not TV cameras in the room. There's frequently a teleprompter to help him stay on track. Um, after his opening comments at fundraisers, reporters were then ushered out before donors are allowed to ask two or three questions vetted by the president's staff. So just to sum up here, he's doing these fundraisers. He, he's obviously not accessible to American people at all, done far fewer interviews, press avails than basically any other president in the modern era. Okay, so there's that. But even when he gets behind closed doors at these fundraisers, he reads from a teleprompter his comments while the reporters are there, ushers them out, and then can't even handle three pre-screened questions without note cards and cheat sheets. So that's where we're at. Even behind closed doors, he is not freelancing here whatsoever, not able to speak off the cuff whatsoever. His aides clearly have no confidence in his ability to speak extemporaneously on any issue, again, even with two or three pre-screened, pre-scripted questions. I don't know. I, this you is know, wild. It's just funny, Crystal, when I see the standards that we hold these people to. Like, for example, we both do this for a living. And sometimes whenever you interview people, they will ask you for a list of questions that are, you know, beforehand for people what they're going to be in an interview. My rule is I'm, I will never participate in that. And in general, unless you're like somebody who was like tangentially involved and now are in the public realm, if you are a podcaster or something like that and you can't just show up extemporaneously and speak, I'm talking about an actual list of the questions, you don't belong in this business, period. Right. And that is what we do, which is like the lowest possible stakes. Yes. Now he's we have the president. Higher standards for yeah. random run-of-the-mill right. podcaster than we do for the president of the United that, States. Yeah, that's my standard for a guy with like 200,000 YouTube subscribers or something, not the president who's in charge of running the entire country. And I mean, it's trite, but it's like a daily reminder with this man of he's just not fit for the job, period. You can't, he was in public life for four, 50 years. Ask him 20 years ago if he would have allowed anybody like this to be president. I mean, I've seen him speak off the cuff, you know, 10, 12 years ago. It was something that a lot of these people actually pride themselves on, the ability to mm -hmm. do it, to have a spontaneous moment. I've seen him, you know, at a campaign rally and all this. That's the mark of a sharp politician, somebody who really belongs in public life. And this is the most friendly audience that exists. And yet he's relying on this and enough that they're leaking it and being like, hey, this is a real problem. I and mean, they are dragging him across. And at this point, like we're almost entering like uh, cr cr criminal territory, at least morally for me, for the people who are shielding the public from this. Like yeah. we need to see oh, this. Yeah, it's true. FDR fourth term level stuff where he's drooling out of his mouth and they're dragging him, you know, across just because they want to still well, remain Listen, Listen, least FDR yeah. was doing some good shit and had a whole I program agree, and people behind him. It's a different it was, deal. <laughs> it was very anti-democratic at that time, and this is the closest analogous that we have gotten to something like it's, that. I mean, it's yeah. very similar to the Dianne Feinstein yeah. situation. Is he as far gone as Dianne Feinstein? You know, I don't think we would put him quite in that category yeah. yet. He's only 10 years younger. Yet, yeah. but we've still got, you know, if he gets reelected, we got four plus more years to watch this decline. That was one of the things that struck me. I don't remember if it was uh, Ezra Klein or Neat Silver in their analysis of why they thought he should drop out, mm -hmm. who pointed not to him as vice president, you know, back a decade plus ago or whatever. They pointed to his announcement speech when he ran for president back in 20, you know, the announcement speech was in 2019, not long ago, and said, oh, look at this difference. Like, look at the decline in just this short period of time. What is this going to look like over the next number of years? What does it look like now when you already know that he cannot handle the very basics of campaigning? Mm -hmm. He can't even handle the fundraising circuit, right? Let alone campaign rallies, let alone any sort of remotely contentious interview. He can't do any of it. That's why he says no to the Super Bowl interview, because he can't do any of it. And his aides have no confidence that he could do any of it. 
But to go back to the Feinstein thing, you know, some of the cope that I see from Democrats is like, oh, well, if there was a real problem, we'd know it. There's all kinds of reporters in this town. Right. I would love to report on yeah. Joe Biden's decline, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, really? How long was Dianne Feinstein in grave decline before we ever heard a word of any of that? And many of these reporters knew exactly what was going on, but they thought it was a little uncouth, disrespectful, et cetera, for the American people to know the truth. So do I put it past any of these people to lie and obscure and cover up the reality of the situation here with regard to Joe Biden? Of course not. These are the very same people who covered up how far gone Dianne Feinstein was. And we really only got a glimpse of it when she was practically on her deathbed. He would have to have a stroke on camera for them to even really take it serious. I, I'm serious. Or you'd have to be hospitalized. And, you know, you found this, Crystal. I feel gross even setting this up. But uh, there's been a more recent leak from Biden to show how virile and strong mm. he is. Uh, let's put this up there on the screen. Uh, it's exclusive to the Daily Mail from an excerpt of a new book leaked by staff. Biden 81 sees the key to his marriage is good sex. How Joe Biden infuriates Jill, his wife of 47 years, with a very risque joke to staff about their private life, even though they aren't shy about their PDA. I mean, it's pretty clear. Apparently, I like many presidents, apparently before him, uh, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, uh, many others who've occupied the Oval Office, Bill Clinton, he likes to brag about his sexual virility um, to his staff. Imagine having to work for this old man who could barely put a sentence together, which I guess probably fits with some nursing home behavior, and True. have to sit there and just uh, just be like, oh, sure, Mr. President, like very uncomfortably like laugh at these jokes. I feel bad for them, uh, the people who are subjected to this, but but I think it was very clearly leaked oh, yeah. um, in an evidence, as you said, to show like, nah, he's fine. Like he's just, you know, he's like a big, oh, he's still like, a, he's, he's still got it. He's like Al Pacino. He's fathering a kid at 83 years old. Oh my God. De Niro, you know, oh, these my people, God. 80 is the new 20. That's, that's what they want us to Yeah. Believe. No, that's yeah. very much the clear intent yeah. of this league of like, well, he can't. He can't even sit for like a basic right. interview with a friendly reporter, but look at this. Yeah. Look at what a yeah. man he is behind the scenes, right. making his wife uncomfortable with his risque yeah, jokes about the, the sex life. Exactly. It's like, oh, please stop. Yeah. I this feel bad for not, this lady. Yeah. This is not helping your case. No one wants to hear about this. Absolutely. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.